Good afternoon, good evening. Thank you. It is so wonderful, wonderful uh, to meet, to be with you in this extraordinary uh, venue right next door to our extraordinary uh, campus. Um, I'm so grateful to our, uh, our host, um, the, our colleagues at the Edward M. Institute for the United States Senate. Thank you, thank you, Sue, so much. Uh, truth in advertisement, I serve as trustee of the, of the Institute, and this is such a joyful, such a wonderful occasion to bring the two um, iconic uh, parts of the city of Boston uh, together for this very, very special discussion. Thank you. Our Beacon Discussion Series Conversations uh, on tomorrow's workforce. The Commonwealth is undergoing an extraordinary demographic transformation, and we at UMass Boston are at the forefront of serving, connecting, and uh, in, in, empowering the next generation of the citizens of the Commonwealth to have all the tools as they continue the journey from our campus to our city to the Commonwealth. It is just wonderful, wonderful to be in commencement season now, just weeks away, and a new cohort of UMass Boston graduates eager to step out into the world, our conversation today could not be more timely. I'm also happy to say that we are delighted that the newly elected mayor of Boston, a woman who embodies many, many firsts, will give the commencement address to our graduates. I want to first thank our stellar lineup of panelists. I know we're all looking forward to their presentations. And my thanks, my thanks, my deep, deep thanks to our donors for their generosity, for their vision, for their investment behind the many career preparation initiatives we celebrate, we name, we recognize today. Let me begin with a very basic question, a question I ask myself every, every morning. What does student success today mean? I believe that among the most cherished outcomes of student success is finding what you love and then taking advantage of opportunities to do what you love during college and after graduation. Getting there, of course, is a collective effort. It takes a village. It takes, as the great African proverb reminds us, takes a whole group if we want to go far. Getting there, the journey to find what we love, what our students love, our students need to be supported in systematic and connected ways on the strength of our outstanding academic programs. I'm so happy that we have several of our outstanding deans with us uh, 
uh, today, uh, Rajini. Uh, it is, of course, the academic excellence that is at the heart of so much of the UMass Boston story. But it is also community engagement. And it's also on the mentoring our students receive from our UMass Boston alumni community. I always used to tell my students when I, I taught, I was a regular academic for 30 years, um, that in, there are two kinds of, it's a Cartesian problem, it's a binary problem. In, in, in your pathway, you will find two kinds of people, mentors and tormentors. <laughs> Stay away from the latter and connect with the former. Indeed, for us, these are the pathways and the resources that help drive student success. And as a result, today's beacons are exceptionally well positioned to find what they love and to succeed in tomorrow's workforce. Indeed, talent development is a priority at UMass Boston. We know that a skilled workforce fuels extraordinary virtuous cycles Highly trained workers attract and form innovative companies which recruit even more skilled workers. This keeps our graduates thriving here in the Commonwealth. It is among Many ways that UMass Boston is, as it says in our charter, off and for the city. And I have humbly added, off and for the times. And these are exceptional times. UMass Boston is, of course, the only public research university in our great city, in the city that embodies what is great about higher education, knowledge, the sciences, the humanities, the arts. I am committed to continue to align our vision with the priorities of our city and our commonwealth, working with the legislature, working with our new mayor, and working with the governor to address the defining issues of our times. Climate change, health, wellness, health equity, health disparities, and inequalities in opportunities to learn, inequalities in opportunities to flourish. UMass Boston is an essential stakeholder our faculty and students produce groundbreaking research that informs public policy, generates virtuous cycles of innovation in healthcare, in technology, in engineering, in the social sciences, in so many domains. And so it is on us to help develop the pipeline of the educated, 21st century, workforce ready young people who will power the regional economy across sectors and across industries. But as important today in our very, very challenging times is the formations of citizens with an ethic of responsibility, an ethic of care, an ethic of engagement for the common purpose that is required for the common good. There is another reason 
why our smart, ambitious, hardworking UMass Boston Beacons are so essential to the future of our workforce and their success in that workforce. Our students represent the demographic future of the United States. Let me put it in a way, I spent 10 years of my life in Los Angeles, so let me channel a little Hollywood here. Our demography is coming to a neighborhood near you. This is the future of our United States of America. The data, the 2020 census data particularly, indicate that the only segments of the U.S. population seeing growth are now immigrant children and children of color. Students in these segments make an increasing share of the overall college enrollment segment in our country today. To put a fine point on it, UMass Boston is the most diverse university in New England. We are the third most diverse campus in the country. Ours is the demographic sweet spot for our country. Finally, I will say that we are very, very fortunate to have so many active UMass Boston alumni who want to share their experience. I had wonderful conversations earlier today with many of you, and what you asked me goes to the heart of our endeavor. How can I help? How can I mentor? How can I scaffold the learning and the journey of the next generation? And I'm so grateful for that. Internship opportunities help students enhance their on-campus learning and make more informed career choices after graduation. And being mentored encourages them to really focus, sharpen in the pursuit of their dreams. Your investments of time and philanthropy are having precisely this kind of impact. Indeed, your dedication is a gift that will keep, sustain academic excellence for tomorrow's You Must Boston, your You Must Boston. I am now very, very happy at this time to introduce our first speaker. Founder Cycle member, Ralph James. Ralph and his wife, Janice, are generous volunteers and philanthropists whose early investments in UMass Boston student success have paved the way for our university-wide efforts to keep students on track towards their academic goals. In 2019, they further generously invested in our students by creating an extraordinary program at UMass Boston, the Professional Apprenticeship Career Experience Program. Ralph retired from the Harvard Business School in 2017 and currently spends his time on philanthropic ventures and volunteer roles with organizations like the Riverview School, the Harvard Graduate School of Education, uh, I know a thing or two about that, the Radcliffe Institute for Advanced Studies, the Harvard Divinity School, the Jocelyn Diabetes Center, Northeast Arc, and the International Quilt Museum. How do you have time to do anything else? Ralph, you didn't get that santan in the archives of the International Quilt Museum. So there's another side here. Maybe you'll share with us. 
He has served as both strategic advisor and executive director of university affairs at the Harvard Business School. He was also responsible for external relations and executive education for HBS. UMass Boston supporters since 2008, Ralph and his wife Janice have been instrumental, essential, in creating the Student Success Initiatives and Professional Apprenticeship Career Experience programs at UMass Boston, for which we are exceptionally grateful. I give you the great Ralph James. Ralph. So let me start by um, saying thank you to Vanessa for putting on this, uh, uh, this whole event. Um, I've done that sort of thing for many years and I know what sort of effort goes into it. So thank you, uh, thank you very much. So when Vanessa asked me a couple of months ago if I would say a few words about um, our philanthropy at uh, uh, at UMass Boston and what it's meant, um, I said absolutely because it's been a, uh, an exciting, a, um, inspiring, uh, and really fascinating um, um, venture here. Uh, so 15 years ago, uh, Janice and I didn't know anything about uh, UMass Boston, uh, but a friend of ours, Paula Popio, was hired as a major gift officer. And uh, being a good major gift officer, she said, uh, you really need to get to know UMass Boston. <laughs> so within, I don't know, a few months, we had met people from the nursing school and we met people from the business school and um, we were on some sort of visiting committee and uh, we met students and we got to know Chancellor Motley and, you know, it was... Um, it was wonderful, and we were, uh, we were really, really, really impressed. But every conversation we had, we asked a question about what are the major challenges that the uh, that, uh, UMB faces. And one challenge emerged as uh, the most pressing, but also the most uh, addressable, and that was uh, student retention. So UMass Boston was admitting really smart really talented, really driven young people. Uh, they'd arrive with, uh, with dreams and ambitions, but there were structural and practical impediments to, uh, to their academic success. Um, now, we saw that uh, UMass Boston had a plan to address this. Uh, we saw that they had uh, faculty and staff who were committed and passionate about addressing this issue, uh, ready to move. And of course, the only thing they didn't have was funding. So we said, okay, this is the opportunity to do something that, that matters. And uh, we decided to give it a shot because the need was so great. And over the next five years, UMass Boston uh, delivered. The results were so impressive that um, when this five-year project was, uh, was over, um, they, uh, uh, ended up funding it uh, entirely going forward um, in their uh, operating budget. So we, I've been doing this sort of stuff for a long time, and usually when a project is over, uh, the institution says, uh, thank you very much, uh, would you like to uh, make another investment to sort of keep it going? And in this case, um, it was remarkable that it was, uh, thank you very much, um, it worked, um, uh, and we're going to fund it from now on. So why don't you spend some time meeting the students that have been forever changed by this program? So we did, and we're absolutely blown away. Now, uh, Janice and I had a long career at, uh, at Harvard Business School, so we've been around some, some really impressive uh, young people, but uh, the, the students we met at, uh, on, on several occasions were um, just... Um, light years ahead, it was, it was, it was fabulous. So, um, you know, there was a point when student success was just an idea, 
It was just something people were thinking about. Now it's part of the DNA, as the chancellor said. It's a phrase that I think is probably used uh, hundreds of times a day to describe the commitment that the university has to its students. So that's fabulous. So then, of course, we asked, um, what's another big idea that you have that will change the, uh, the landscape here? And a few months after we asked that question, we sat down with um, the interim chancellor, Newman, and uh, went through four or five ideas that she thought were fabulous, and uh, one sort of emerged as, uh, uh, as the favorite, and as you'll, you'll hear um, uh, later on, it's delivered. This is the PACE program the chancellor mentioned. Um, it's, uh, uh, it's delivered on all counts, and I think uh, a large degree of, of that goes to the three people who run the, uh, the program who I had a wonderful lunch with the other day because they are knowledgeable, experienced, passionate, committed to, to making this work. Um, so why has our philanthropic experience at, uh, at the university been so successful and rewarding? Uh, Janice and I talked the other night and thought it was because um, the university checks the critical boxes that we think are necessary to uh, do things that make a difference, um, a, a real and lasting difference. The first is leadership. Uh, no organization can be effective at what they do without strong and committed leadership at the top. We have, we have that for sure. Uh, next is excellence. Uh, faculty and staff here have an unwavering uh, commitment to, um, to their students to make sure that everyone who comes here uh, goes out into the world and does something that, uh, uh, that matters. Uh, execution is critically important, uh, and UMass Boston gets things done. Uh, ideas become reality here, uh, and you, you'll see it all around you because uh, that big hole soon will be something. Um, that's going to be fabulous, um, and you'll certainly in the in the uh, uh, presentations tonight you'll see examples of that execution orientation. So with uh, with leadership, with excellence, with execution comes impact, uh, doing things that make a real difference in the world. So as you listen to the pres presentations tonight, think about leadership, excellence, uh, execution, and impact. Uh, our partnership with UMass Boston has been incredibly rewarding, and uh, I am sure that you will find yours uh, equally so. So thank you. Thank you very much. Ralph for your generous remarks. We are so grateful. We are honored to call you and Janice partners in our work. Please accept this humble gift from our campus to symbolize your family's 10 years of membership in our founders circle of generous philanthropists who provide transformational investments in our campus. The gift is uh, regional, local, it's sustainable, and it's made with love and brilliance by local artists. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to now acknowledge several other members of our Founders Circle who are with us this evening, beginning with our dear friend, Dr. Gerald Gaughan. Dr. Gaughan, please join me. Applause 
Dr. Gons serves as a member of the Menin College of Nursing and Health Sciences Advisory Board and has supported the UMass Boston Tufts University Medical School Winter Enrichment Program since its inception 10 years ago. In that time, 238 students have participated and 20% have gone on to medical or doctoral careers. You will hear more about that program and our Beacon Student Success Fellowships, also supported by Dr. Gon, the Jane and Gerald Gon Student Success Fund this evening. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Gon, for your 10 years of membership in our founder circle and your 20 years of philanthropy at UMass Boston. We are honored to welcome two new Founders Cycle members to our Giving Society this evening. First, <coughs> the Leeser family established the Elsie Leeser Memorial Scholarship in our Manning College in 2018 for nursing students of immigrant background. They are represented this evening by Ken and Nancy Leeser. Please join me, Ken and Nancy. The Leeser's family. The Leeser family gave this general scholarship at UMass Boston in honor of their beloved matriarch, Ilse, who survived the Holocaust as a teenager and made her way to our country in 1947 and dedicated her life to caring for her community as a passionate nurse, practitioner, educator, mother, matriarch. I am profoundly touched that your family sought us as a home for your mother's legacy, recognizing echoes of her story in our UMass Boston beacons. Welcome to the Founder Circle and thank you. Last but not least, I would like to invite John Martin, Chief Executive Officer of AEW Capital Management to join me. Thank you, John. 
This year, John and his colleagues gave the best retirement gift I've ever heard of. Note to the faculty and senior administrators and staff here, please. <laughs> they have honored the successful career of Pamela Strout Herbst, UMass Boston class of 1977, with a gift of a quarter of a million dollars in scholarship in her name for our students who are interested in careers in real estate development. <laughs> These annual scholars, Pam, will also gain valuable internship and mentorship from AEW Capital Management, Pam, I'm so happy you're here with us, with your husband, Bob, class of 1978. Welcome back home, Bob. It is now my honor, my pleasure, to invite Dr. Monique Cooper and our slate of panelists to the stage. Monique is serving as our moderator this evening. She joins us as the Assistant Vice Chancellor, Vice Provost, Assistant okay. Vice Provost for Academic and Career Advising. Vice Provost, Monique. <laughs> Among the programs in her purview are the Amazing Pace Program and the Office of Career services and internships. Her background is in human development, psychology, school counseling and learning, leadership in education policy. She brings a wealth of equity-minded experiences and sensibilities and practices to our workforce development efforts. And we are grateful for Monique's service every day especially tonight. I give you the incomparable Monique Cooper. I'm gonna speak the Vice Chancellor into existence tonight, how about that? Well, it's an honor to be here. Thank you, Chancellor, Chancellor for your lovely remarks. It's so good to see faces, right? No masks, this is amazing. Um, I started this role back in September, and it was a brand new role, and for those of you who have ever started a role that didn't exist before, you know that there's quite a bit of learning and challenging challenges that you face, right? But I started this role, and I was overwhelmed and enthusiastic at where we were heading as a campus and as a community. I find UMass Boston students to be some of the most brilliant, talented, resourceful, the best and the brightest students here in the Commonwealth. So I'm honored to serve them every day through my efforts and my role. As a first generation college student, I know firsthand the struggles of working full time, having family responsibilities, and trying to navigate a campus that I didn't quite understand. Like many of our students, we're just all trying to figure it out, right? So, Recently, I attended a convening in Miami. Don't be jealous, it was like 90 degrees and beautiful out there. <laughs> um, but it was a convening of urban-serving public land-grant institutions. 
And a colleague of mine shared that their university's mission is to let knowledge serve the city. And that resonated with me so much because I think that that's our mission at UMass Boston. I believe that as a public urban serving institution, it is our duty to let our knowledge serve the city, to let our talent serve the city, and to let our students go out and do what they do best, right? And you all in this room make that happen through your generous gifts. And it's just so beautiful to see every day. As the chancellor stated in his earlier remarks, our current labor market is growing by the minute, right? It's growing more racially and ethnically diverse. It's growing more um, with people from all different age groups, gender expressions, and other social identities. So when we think about what that means for us in our positionality, we're in that prime position to cultivate the workforce of tomorrow. And I believe as a leader on campus in workforce development, that we want to be the go-to university partner for our employer relations. And we are, we are ready to do that. We are ready to take that on. So we're working diligently to strengthen the infrastructure of employer partnerships here on campus. We're prioritizing campus and industry partners with a focus on providing students with curricular, curricularly aligned and mission aligned experiential learning opportunities, mentoring, and financial initiatives. One example of this program you've already heard a little bit about today, but it's our PACE program. The Professional Apprenticeship Career Experience Program provides undergraduate students with paid, on-campus, easily accessible opportunities to cultivate their career capital and to grow their career readiness skills. They earn credit through a career development success course where they learn things like how to write a resume, how to build a LinkedIn profile, how to write an email, how to communicate effectively, all of those things that I know you as leaders and employers want and need from our students. Starting in January 2020 with only 12 students, January 2020, the height of the pandemic, right? We were able to grow our students to over 120 students in our program right now. So it's been awesome. In addition, recent retention data shows that PACE students are retained at 100%. So I would be remiss if I didn't publicly thank Ralph and Janice James for your generous donation and gift. I, was, I had the pleasure of having lunch with Ralph uh, a couple days ago. And your passion for our students just exuded out. And it was so inspiring. And it makes me get excited and passionate as well for the work that we're doing. So thank you. Structured programs such as PACE that integrate curriculum, work-based learning, mentoring, and financial support have proven to produce successful, equitable outcomes for our students. Our employer and campus partners continue to uplift the work we do at, at UMass Boston, and tonight is a demonstration of that work and commitment. So we have an all-star panel here. Don't they look great? So tonight you're here from members of our community about their experiences creating and participating in these programs. We have Tambi Patel, a junior, in the newly named Manning College of Nursing and Health Sciences. <laughs> Woo! I used to work at the College of Nursing and Health Sciences before I got poached away, so they have a very special place in my heart. Um, Dan Phillips, founder of the Entrepreneurship and Diversity Scholarship Mentoring Program here at UMass Boston. There's, there's a little more, but creator of the Student Entrepreneurship Program. And I also found out that he is on the board of Hack Diversity, which is one of our strongest employer partners at, at um, UMass Boston. So, yes. Next, we have Timothy Masoke, 
an alumnus of the College of Science and Math and the Honors College, class of 2017. Anime Ra Ratawa, I'm so sorry, I'm gonna say it right, um, is a 2008 College of Science and Mathematic and Honors College student who is in her fourth year at, drum roll, Tufts University Medical School. <laughs> and then lastly, my better half, Dr. Joseph Cooper, who is the J. Keith Motley Endowed Chair of the Sport Leadership Administration Program and the Chancellor Special Assistant Advisor for Black Life. <laughs> it's a long title. <laughs> Following their respective remarks, we will have a conversation about the ways UMass Boston is supporting students through their career goals, ways we can expand that work, and how you can be involved. Let's start with um, the most important voice in the room and who should always be the loudest, one of our students. I'm a little short. <laughs> um, so hello everyone, my name is Tanvi Patel and I'm a third year student at UMass Boston in the Honors College majoring in nursing and I'm gonna graduate in 2023. I'm originally from Billerica, Massachusetts, and I want to say hi to my parents and best friend and, um, supporting me in the audience. <laughs> Medical professionals are everyday heroes who use their knowledge to care for patients in their time of need. They face challenges, solve problems, and act as a friend, especially to the young patients. It is an incredible honor to know that I have the passion and drive to be just like these heroes, which is why I am preparing to enter the field of pediatric nursing. I chose UMass Boston because of our affordability and standings in the professional world, location, as well as affordability. These three reasons, plus the hands-on experiences I knew I would gain, made the choice clear. I knew that this was the place where I would grow and excel, both academically and professionally. As an undergraduate major, I'm preparing for my career in the following ways. First, being a member of the Student Nurses Association on campus allows for a group of passionate and supportive students to come together and accomplish community outreach projects, as well as having access to an alumni database. Second, I have been working at Boston Children's Hospital as a clinical assistant for the past year, which serves as a gateway role to becoming a registered nurse. This has been an exciting and educational opportunity as once I graduate, I have a job lined up to onboard as a registered nurse at the top children's hospital in the country. Third would be my clinical placements, which are facilitated by the UMass Boston Clinical and Internship Placement Office. Placements at institutions such as Mass General, St. Elizabeth's Hospital, and Spalding Rehab have allowed me to make important connections, which will go a long way, especially in the healthcare field. These skills and experience in combination with UMass Boston's high reputation will serve me well upon graduation. I am fortunate to receive a number of scholarships and have the support of my family, roommates, and faculty. Because they are here tonight, I'd especially warmly thank the Leeser family for the Ilse Leeser Memorial Scholarship Fund that I will receive through graduation. There are a number of offices and organizations assisting me at UMass Boston, and I feel that I received the best guidance from the College of Nursing and Health Sciences. While I still have one more year to go, the skills I have learned and experiences I've had in these clinical settings make me confident about the path I'm on and what the future may hold. Thank you all for coming tonight and in your interest in supporting students just like me. Okay, so this is going to take a few minutes. Um, uh, Dan Phillips, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, it's going to take a few minutes because I've been involved with UMass Boston for about 28 years now. And um, so I'll start quickly on my career. That's the shortest part. But um, my entire career has been in uh, venture capital-backed uh, software startups. And uh, I, I, survived, I just hung in there long enough and survived long enough where 
I participated in two IPOs and I uh, had three acquisitions where, where from all three from Fortune uh, 50 uh, size big tech uh, startups and or, or, or corporations and and uh, the, the interesting thing to me is my first job out of college I had no idea what a startup was I just that's where I got my first job and I would have worked for anybody right you know and and what I didn't I, anyone that hired me I would have worked for them and you know but I got into a startup. And then I realized that, like, this is not just a job, it's an entire career. And it's an industry, and it's an amazing industry. And so my thesis for 20 plus years at UMass Boston has been that UMass Boston students are the, uh, would do incredibly well in this industry. They just need a little exposure to it, and they need some networking and, and mentorship. So, um, so. My involvement with UMass Boston is, uh, it's really kind of evolved as my life and career evolved. I, um, I called them up in 1994. Um, I couldn't email them because they didn't have email. And, uh, and I set up a scholarship, uh, and a scholarship and a mentorship program. And, and, and at the time, it was, it was my, and I had very little money back then, and good news, UMass Boston wasn't that expensive a place to go. So, um, but I, I um, the theme back then was I just wanted to help students that had, like, they were on a life's mission. And they were going to college as a means to an end. They needed to get somewhere, and they could use a little bit of financial help, but they also could use someone to kind of th help them think through what they wanted to do in the steps. So, so that's how I started for many years with UMass Boston. And I did, as I went through that, came to the realization that these people at UMass Boston are the types of people that I like to hire. They're very unentitled. They're very hardworking. They're self-sufficient. They can just get things done. And they handle ambiguity beautifully. And that's a skill that you go to a lot of top universities, they don't get that, right? Uni UMass Boston students understand how to handle ambiguity, which is so critically important in a startup. So, so after my fourth startup, I needed a break. Uh, and so I, uh, um, I approached UMass Boston about building an entrepreneurship center. And we did that, and uh, it got pretty large. And we had a lot of curriculum. Uh, we had workshops and events. We continued the scholarships. But the best thing that we built was something that we called the STEP program. And the STEP program was this you know, mentorship. We'll take students. We'll train them on entry-level uh, internships and jobs for venture capital-backed startups, and then we'll network with them to get them the interviews with these, uh, with these startups. And that program did tremendously well. And then as my life evolved, I had a biological need to do another startup. So, um, so I went off and I did my fifth, uh, and uh, that was a company called Cloud Health Technologies. And uh, that completely consumed me for six years. And, uh, but then at the end of that, we had a very nice acquisition uh, by a company called VMware, which is a part of Dell and EMC. And, um, and uh, Dell already had Michael Dell as the chairman, and they didn't need me. And so, um, so I went back again to you, Mass Boston. And what we did this time was we replicated the STEP program. But instead of it just being me as the mentor, we had 30 other mentors that we brought in. A lot of them were cloud health people, but a lot of them were uh, STEP alumni from UMass Boston that went through the program the first time around and then came back to be mentors for, the, for this new student, student group. Um, and we ended up with 30 mentors, and it was one-to-one -one mentoring and same thing. We helped them all to get internships and all that. So, and then COVID struck. I told you this would be a long story, but it's 28 years, right? So COVID struck, and then um, the, I'm doing pretty well for 28 years. I'm almost done. COVID um, um, stopped everything. We had to put it on pause. Now things are opening up again, so we're restarting the program. We're in the process of, of, of kicking it off again, and we just uh, awarded four scholarships about a month ago, um, scholarships and mentorship uh, to a new group of students. And so... Um, 
so I mean, you know, after 28 years and just as startups evolve and like as your life evolves, you have different ways that you can participate and but kind of the end results have been to date, we have approximately 25 scholarships that we've awarded uh, and we've uh, gotten 175 students paid internships in venture capital. All right, so, 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 so. But thank you, so I look forward to chatting more about the program later. Thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. Uh, it's so good to be back at UMass Boston. Uh, UMass Boston was my home for four years, so it's been five years since I was back here, and it's just amazing to be back on campus. And thank you, Vanessa, and the whole team for putting this together. So. My name is Timothy Musoke, and um, I was in UMass Boston's class of 2017, majoring in biochemistry, so in the College of Science and Math and the Honors College. And um, I grew up in Uganda and completed my early education there before moving to the US to start college. So as you can imagine, moving from tropical East Africa to unpredictable New England weather, it's quite the transition. Um, and I'll just take a moment to shout out to my wife, Sarah, who uh, is also a UMass Boston class of 2017 alum. And <laughs> so I currently work as a senior research associate at Relay Therapeutics, which is a, an oncology research company, and I support the early stage of the research. And when I first came to UMass Boston, um, I was really driven to UMass Boston by the mission that said, um, it, you know, UMass Boston branded itself as uh, a research institution with a teaching soul, and I was really excited about the prospect of doing research. I hardly knew what it meant, but I was just excited about that. And um, so I was in Uganda uh, doing a course in biomedical lab technology, and when I moved here, um, I wanted to continue doing some kind of biomedical research. So. Um, when I first arrived, I spoke to um, people in the Honors College, so uh, Dean Rajin is here, and one of my really wonderful mentors, um, Professor Megan Rockup, um, I spoke to her and I said, I really want to do research, um, what does it involve? And it's because of mentors like this, uh, she introduced me to uh, several programs on campus, so um, throughout my three and a half, four years at UMass Boston, um, I was able to do research on campus, full-time paid, um, under the NIH-funded initiative for maximizing student development program. And even while conducting research under that program, I was able to apply to several scholarships, so the uh, McConnell Alumni Research Fund, um, the Sanofi Genzyme Undergraduate Research Fund, and several other scholarships, which really um, helped me to do full-time research. So, I did not, the only other job that I had on campus was in the Honors College Dean's office, and so it was literally Honors College Dean's office and to the lab full time. So I did not work off campus any semester, which was amazing. So I was able to support my education while doing the research that I really wanted to do. And so throughout my time at UMass Boston, I received incredible mentorship from the Honors College, the uh, IMSD program, uh, Professor Alexi Viraxa, who's in whose lab I worked my entire time at UMass Boston. And I feel this really prepared me to um, go into my career with the type of confidence that, you know, when you go into the career, you know, um, coming from uh, a diverse background, it's not, you know, many people from diverse backgrounds in industry, you know, especially within STEM field. And, I strongly believe that the mentorship and networks that were developed while at UMass Boston have prepared me for the workforce. So um, it's really great to be back at UMass Boston and to just give back in any way. And I feel that um, as alumni, that's really what we should be doing uh, is just giving back to current students in any way we can. Thank you so much for listening. Good evening. It's an honor to be here with you all this evening. Uh, it's also a special privilege for my wife and I to have a quote unquote date night. We have two little daughters at home and we don't get to get out together much. So this is a double pleasure for me. My name is uh, Dr. Joseph Cooper. Uh, I have the honor of serving as the Dr. J. Keith Motley Endowed Chair of the Sport Leadership and Administration Program 
here at the university as well as the honor of serving as special assistant to the chancellor for black life. Um, in my role, um, the sport leadership and administration program was established three years ago. Uh, yes, that means we were established right before the big pandemic hit. Um, due to a generous gift by Jim Davis and New Balance, they provided a $5 million gift uh, to provide scholarships for our students. This year, we awarded 19 scholarships to uh, over $28,000 for 19 of our students. And these are students across diverse backgrounds who are pursuing careers in the sport industry. When the initial gift was provided, even before I was hired, it was clear that the vision of the university, the vision of this program, was to harness the talent of diverse students who need access, need exposure, need opportunity, and need support. And we have been able to do that. Within three short years, we have over 105 students enrolled in our program. We graduated our first cohort of students last year, four students who graduated. This year, we'll be graduating another dozen. Our student, thank you. Our students have completed internships with a wide range of sport organizations, not only in the greater Boston area, but also internationally. We've had students who've interned with the Special Olympics, New Balance, Fenway Sport Management, Craft Sport and Entertainment, Boston Celtics, DraftKings, The Base, the Boston Athletic Association, they've got a big marathon coming up soon, and we have our students who will be working that event. So the gifts that you all have provided, there are two words that I want to leave with you that um, I hope that will resonate with you that are important for our students. Uh, one, the Chancellor mentioned earlier around transformation. Uh, your gifts provide transformational change for our students to be able to pursue their dreams and to change not only their lives and their families, but their communities. Uh, in our communities. The other part is legacy. Uh, when uh, coming from the sports world, one of the quotes that I live by, uh, by the late Jackie Robinson, was the importance of our lives lies in the impact that we have on others. And when you think about the gifts that you provide, I've uh, received some emails from some of our students who received even as, as small of a gift as $500 scholarship and the level of gratefulness that they expressed, I mean, heartfelt, how transformational that was. You know, many of our students are working part-time, full-time, supporting family. Many of them are incurring a significant amount of scholarship debt. And so every gift that you provide has a profound impact on our students. As you've heard from the students here tonight, they have big dreams, they have the ambition, they have the talent, they have the work ethic, they just need the support. So thank you all for being here this evening and uh, we greatly appreciate your support. I look forward to the discussion. So here we go. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Vanessa, and everyone for organizing this. Um, I'd like to start with a special shout out to all my parent figures at table 13. We have my parents, <laughs> and then my mentor, um, former dean of the College of Science and Math at UMass, Dr. Grzowski, and then my dear friends and your fellow donors, Linda Lou and John Bersiaga. So thank you, everyone, for being here. So my name is Zanima Rontava. I also go by Annie. Um, I was born and raised in the city of Chandigarh in India, and I moved here um, right before starting college at UMass, so about eight years ago now. My parents, however, immigrated here in the late 90s, so I spent all my academic time in India and then all my vacation time here bothering them. Um, I was a biology major and a psych minor at UMass, and I was also part of the Honors College, um, and special mention to Dean uh, Shrikant for an amazing experience there. And now I'm a current fourth year medical student at Tufts University School of Medicine, about to graduate in a month. Very excited for that. Thank you. All right, I'd like to start by mentioning why I chose UMass Boston in the first place. So with my multicultural upbringing, I wanted to make sure that I would go into a place that would provide me a low cost but high quality education where I would thrive because of my background. And UMass Boston was the perfect choice for me because my older brother was already thriving here when I arrived. And I'm very happy to say that he's now a second year internal medicine resident um, at SUNY Upstate. So he's another one of the very excellent alumni that UMass has produced. And 
I think I speak for both of us when I say that the educational, extracurricular, and leadership opportunities, and more importantly, the mentors that we made at UMass Boston, have shaped us to be the successful young adults that we are today. At UMass, I was able to explore my research interests in biochemistry, which I realized was not for me, um, psychology, which I did very much enjoy, and even humanities, which was through the Honors College and turned into my senior thesis at graduation. I immersed myself in countless volunteer opportunities, ranging from a trip to Detroit focused on youth education and empowerment through the Beacon Voyages for Service program, and also being a patient advocate addressing social determinants of health through the Health Leads program at Mass General Hospital. One program that I owe my career choice to is the Tufts UMass Boston Winter Enrichment Program, where I got to be a pretend first year medical student for three weeks and decide whether this was the right career path for me or not. And Dr. Gon, who is here today, um, has been so sponsoring that program for 10 years. So I'm very grateful to you and the late Mrs. Gon for all your donations. And not only did I benefit from the program as a UMass Boston student, I have also been teaching in that program during my time at Tufts. Um, and I've been teaching as a physical diagnosis coach, which is a paid position. So thank you again, Dr. Gon, for continuing to support me. And I have to say, beyond all the academic and extracurricular opportunities at UMass, what makes this place stand out is the people. I have met so many mentors here who have helped shape me who I am today. And one of them, as I mentioned already, um, a fatherly figure to me, Dr. Grzowski, transformed me from a shy, introverted freshman who had just immigrated here to a confident public speaker speaking before you today. So thank you so much, Dr. Grzowski. And due to, due to my outstanding, well-rounded education at UMass Boston, I have thrived in medical school and will now be moving on to residency at Harvard um, through the Mass General Hospital Diagnostic and Interventional Radiology Residency Program. Thank you. Whew, I feel like we could just stop there and be good, right? <laughs> I mean, that's amazing. That is just so amazing. So we have a couple of questions here um, that we want to dive into. Um, I heard some themes throughout all of the, the conversations that we just witnessed. And one of the big ones was mentoring, right? So Dan, could you share a little bit about, this is not on the, the thing I know you know my husband knows I, no, I, I, I honestly have no idea what she's gonna ask me <laughs> he knows I, I just go rogue sometimes go, you know fun. That's fun. so in thinking about building the programs that you've built mm -hmm. over the 28 years that, that mm -hmm. you've been a part of this why do you feel like mentoring was like that was it for you like what was it about that that helped our students particularly I, I think for me and it, um, you know, and I certainly have had mentors in, in my career um, that helped me immensely. But, but the, the bigger thing to me was just that, like, when I got into what is an incredible industry, it was completely by luck. And, uh, but once I got into it, it, was, it, I had no exposure to it growing up. I wasn't in a family or an environment that understood about the startup venture capital world and technology and all that and but I just got into it and I was I was good at it mm -hmm. and um, I really I, I thought that you know and I, I looked at an environment like UMass Boston where you have these very talented individuals that are working so hard to get themselves through school and trying to figure out what their career is and I, I just felt that they we owed them some exposure to this world and just, you know, and, and just kind of just some level of networking and connections to get them started. So, so I think that was my, my motivation and my, my thought about mentorship is so much, we all have careers mm -hmm. and we've learned a lot along the way. Mm -hmm. And it's so easy to go talk to a student in college who is interested in a similar career. What you, what you know is mind blowing to them mm -hmm. And it's just sharing that. So I, I think that's all that mentorship is. Yeah, right. Sharing a piece of yourself and your journey, right? Completely. Right. And helping students. I always talk with students like, your career path is not linear, right? right? Yep. It's very windy right. and bendy. Right. And I feel like the mentors that we have in our life are just people that 
help us around those bends. Can so. you let me add one more thing, even though it's probably not no. my term no, anymore? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but I, I use the term uh, ambiguity around mm -hmm. EMS Boston students. And if you spent time and you know, talked in classrooms and went to events and workshops, you'd realize that the student body here uh, is working during the day and they are taking a bus to come to school at night and they may have a family that they're supporting as well. Mm -hmm. And um, they have no idea how they're gonna get through college. They don't know. They just know one semester at a time. We have, I have, you know, you have enough money to get through that one semester, but they can do it. They just, they, they don't, they just, they're going in the right direction. They're taking the steps. They'll figure it out as they go. And that is one of the most important traits that you can have to be successful in a career. Um, you can figure it out and you just keep going even though someone's not giving you the steps to get there. Um, and that's what the student body is. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I'm gonna go to the students now and I'm gonna lean into this mentoring a little bit. It's one thing to be a mentor, but it's one thing to be wi willing to be mentored, right? Um, and you talked about all of the fantastic mentors that you have that are in this very room right now. How did you find them? UMass Boston is a big place. How did you find some of these mentors that you've made connections with for years? And, and what system or structure was in place to be able to lead you to these folks? Sorry, another question that's not on. So we have a theme going. I can, I can take that. Um, so my, I've had a lot of mentors here and I think there's a lot of systems in place that helped me get there. Um, when I started here, um, I knew I wanted to go to medical school and I joined the Pre-Med A Freshman Success Community Program. And for those of you who don't know, um, UMass has these freshman success communities where they group a bunch of 20 or 25 students with similar professional interests together. So you would take all the same classes in your first year so you don't get lost in the crowd. Um, and my particular community was led by Dr. Krasovsky. That's how I met him, and then I was also part of the Honors College, which is where I met a lot of my other mentors as well. So there are definitely systems in place to help you, you know, introduce you. But also, I think a big, a big theme at UMass is, is being a peer mentor, and I had a lot of peer mentors um, during my time in the community. So these are upperclassmen. Um, who guide you throughout your journey. I became a peer mentor myself um, after my second year. Um, and you know, that's just an, another example of a system in place to help you. And I think what makes UMass Boston students stand out is we all wanna help each other. We've all seen the benefit of helping each other and we just wanna continue to pay that forward. Uh, Annie said, and by adding that um, it's really about the drive. So like I mentioned, when I started, um, I knew nothing about what I wanted to do. I just had an idea, but I didn't know, you know what steps to take. And I think for me, the three valuable mentors were um, Megan Rickop, who I mentioned in the Honors College, because she just guided me along the way. I was like, I don't know how to do this. She's like, okay, I'll help you out. And um, for example, I was applying to um, scholarships and you know research programs and I didn't even have a resume so I said uh, where do I start and she helped me draft a resume and I'm telling you to this day I still use the same <laughs> template that she she helped me draft and um, and then in the honors college uh, was Mike Metzger who has since moved on to a different I forget where he is now um, but Mike was great because he taught us as honors college deans ambassadors um, he taught us how to basically seek out opportunities, how to liaise with people from different offices. So he had us going out, sending emails to different departments within the university and just figuring out events, planning out events. I think um, just the drive to learn, asking questions and saying, hey, I really wanna learn how to do this, but I have no idea how to do this, how do I start? And I think just one mentor guiding you really sets the stage for every other mentor, you know, who you end up meeting down the line. Great, thank you for sharing that navigational capital, right? Being able to move through and figure out things, I think is one of our strongest skills for our students. So, Dr. Cooper, the other Dr. Cooper. <laughs> Could you talk a little bit about, you know, your program and the job skills that you hope to impart on our students through the curriculum, but also through the internship experiences that you mentioned, which are mind-blowing, all of those great organizations? Absolutely. Um, the purpose of our program is to cultivate equity-minded, character-driven, and transformational leaders who will positively improve society through sport. 
Um, our core values as a program are equity and social justice, diversity and inclusion, integrity, and holistic development. Um, what we want our students to do is to imagine what the sport world would look like if everybody had access to participate in all sports, if everybody was represented at all levels of leadership, if everybody, so when you look at many sports, you notice that there are racial disparities. If you look across sports, you'll see there are gender disparities. If you look at who has access to certain sports, you'll see there are, there's a pervasiveness of ableism and classism. So we help our students through our courses have a level of awareness about how certain systems, even as early as youth sport, all the way through interscholastic, intercollegiate, and professional sport, how they have the power to either reproduce or transform inequalities that exist in society. And so what it takes is equity-minded leaders who are asking tough questions, who are thinking outside the box, who are seeing talent in places that have been overlooked. And so with our students in our curriculum, as well as with their internships, their internship supervisors, we have an outstanding advisory board who are very passionate about mentoring, providing access to students, and helping them navigate spaces, as the students mentioned, Oftentimes, you don't necessarily have the blueprint before you get to the beginning of the race. But if you have somebody who provides you with that blueprint, you have the will, you have the drive, you have the ability to do it, and that's what our students do. So it's been uh, wonderful working with the students. So many of them come into the program with a very limited view of what the sport industry entails and what they can do. And by the time they get exposed to all of our courses, they see that this is a multi-billion dollar global industry and it's continuing to grow, and they're really excited to pursue those opportunities. Yeah, and they have to shine in them. You know, we, we had a conference on Monday, the mm -hmm. Equity and Sport Conference, and um, the students presented some of the work that they're doing. Similar to all you very impressive students on this stage, and it's just mind-blowing what they can, they can come up with. And they won a, their national case study competition, too, at a national conference, so it's really impressive to see our students shine. So Dan, 28 years. Yes. Yeah. And I'm 42. Yeah. So amazing. You look great. Yeah, thank you. Thank you look great. You. Thank you. If you think back to 28 years ago, uh, yep. when yep. you made the decision to uh, partner with UMass Boston, yep. why us? Why? What's your why? So um, I, 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 I thought I should do something that was not just about me. Um, was the first start, um, but but I, and I I knew I wanted to um, do a scholarship, and I knew I wanted to have mentor you know mentorship as a part of that. I, you know, it's funny that it's UMass Boston's theme today, but that was 1994. That's what I wanted to do, and um, but but I wanted uh, I wanted an urban uh, environment. I wanted a diverse environment. I wanted a public school, um, and uh, and I wanted. Uh, uh, and in, I wanted a student who was uh, was al already paying their way, own way, right? And they just they they were working and they were taking out loans, but they had this unmet need that they needed to f fulfill. And um, uh, and I also didn't want the, the the tuition to be so high that my money wouldn't matter. And if you look at all that criteria, there is absolutely only one university in the, in in the New England area that meets that. That's great. So that's the why you started. Why do you still stay? So um, I, um, you know, I, and I kind of uh, talked through this, but it really is in doing that. And I started with students. I didn't care what industry they were in in the beginning. I just wanted them to have a life's mission they were on, and, and they were going to get there. They just needed some help. So I had a lot of nursing you know, students in all different areas. But, but um, when I did start to gravitate more towards my area of expertise, um, I truly um, uh, believe that th they're, you know, they're per perfect fit for the industry that I'm in. And um, they, um, you know, it just seemed crazy not to do it. I, I honestly think that, um, I, I know that anyone can do some version of what I do. Um, it, you don't, maybe you don't, you know, leave work for four years and build a center, but everyone has a career. And I don't care if it's accounting or finance or, or real estate or whatever, um, it's just so easy 
to, you know, just if you just want to have one scholarship and one student and any amount of money, it doesn't matter. It's just help with a little bit of that unmet need. Um, and then the mentorship, just to help someone to just talk things through. Mm -hmm. I don't see how you can't do that, right? No gift is too small right. for our students. Completely. Right. And the students, you know, uh, yeah, they just, they're working so hard and, and they've got a couple thousand dollars that are between them and being able to go to school. And, uh, but, they've, but they've worked and they're working at, you know, whatever, McDonald's or whatever, and, and they're, they're taking out loans and, and so, yeah. yeah. Well, we know that the majority of our students work part-time, full-time, and have a thousand other responsibilities, right? As I'm sure the students on this stage can relate to, right? So given that you had all of those responsibilities and your academics, could you talk a little bit about the types of internships or experiential learning that you were able to weave into all of those things um, that you participated in that helped prepare you for the world of work? Absolutely. I can do Is this, I don't know. Yeah, oh, you're good. Okay. <laughs> um, so my freshman year, um, I remember somebody had just told me like, oh, do you know you can volunteer at Boston Children's Hospital? And I was like, oh, no, I didn't know that. Because a pediatric hospital, it's such like intricate care that you're like, oh, you wouldn't think they would just let a nursing student go there. Um, and there, I started volunteering on the cardiac ICU unit and the surgical ICU unit. And then I made a connection with the nurse manager on the unit that I currently work on. And she said, I will hire you in the summertime. And I said, wow, that's great. Like, that's, it's always been my dream to work in the pediatric setting. And Boston Children's Hospital, I mean, it's the number one pediatric hospital in the country. Um, and even now, um, through clinicals, I'm figuring out now, five months ahead of time, where I'm going to be placed in the fall. Um, so just some examples of hospitals that they are giving us choices are like Mass General, Boston Children's, um, some of the Boston public schools. So I want to say that, especially being in the nursing curriculum, I feel like Students that are nursing students think it's so easy, but the nursing curriculum is actually very difficult. It's very hard, and it's not all on us to go out and find our clinical placements. We have a great office that places us in these settings just because we have professors and advisors that have worked there in the past, and they know what a great academic um, holding our students have. Great. Thank you for sharing. Did anyone mm -hmm. want to add? Um, I can add. Um, I had a lot of jobs while I was at UMass Boston. I think at one point I had five. Yeah. Um, <laughs> some of them were off campus. I worked at CVS for three years, but a lot of them were on campus, and that is how I continued to focus on my education. Um, I was a, I worked at the Student Success Center at the College of Science and Math, um, where, you know, most of, most of the time I was just studying, so that was great. Um, I, like I mentioned earlier, I was a peer mentor um, for the Pre-Med A Freshman Success Community, which was also a paid position, which actually allowed me to follow my passion for mentoring. Um, and you know, you learn a lot as a mentee, but you also learn a lot as a mentor. And I think that was extremely beneficial to my education as well. Um, I was also a tutor on campus um, for general chemistry which again was helping, even though it seemed like I was helping other students, it was also helping me in my um, studying for the MCAT, which is a pre-medical exam. Um, so I think there's, you know, being a UMass Boston student, it's not uncommon to have multiple jobs put on many hats, but I think there are a lot of on-campus opportunities at UMass that help you uh, focus on your education while also, you know, being able to support it on the side. Mm -hmm. Access and opportunity, right? Yeah. That's great. So, um, Babe, <laughs> what do you feel like is, <laughs> what do you feel like? Who are you like, talking to? Oh, <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> um, what do you feel like is needed to support our students? You know, from your perspective, you're very connected to the students. They're in your office all the time. What do you feel like is, is really needed to provide more support for them? I mean, there are a couple of things. I mean, one, uh, it just requires a caring heart, you know, that you're willing to listen to their stories, listen to their journeys, listen to what their specific needs are. Um, oftentimes, we may have in mind what we want to provide for them, but it doesn't actually map on to what they actually need. Um, you know, students have different needs. Uh, sometimes it's academic, sometimes it's social, sometimes it's psychological, and it doesn't mean that 
and sometimes it's financial, and not that all of us have to provide the exact same thing, um, but we all have the ability to provide our students with different types of support. So within our program, we talk about different types of capital that are valued in different environments, social capital, linguistic capital, navigational capital, cultural capital, economic capital. These are different types of capital that um, we always I tell our students, uh, and one of my mentors when I was in college told me this, you don't know what you don't know. And I remember when I was in college, I was like, yes, coming to college just to learn. Of course you don't know what you don't know. But that was an immature young college student who didn't quite understand what my mentor was telling me and the importance of understanding how people get to where they get to in life, the decisions they make, how they think is informed by what they know and what they have access to at that time. So it's always you have to be mindful of not judging people when you see certain decisions being made. Well, did they have access to the economic capital? Did they have access to the social capital, the cultural capital, the navigational capital, everything about the MCAT? Not all students come knowing, okay, well, how do I prepare for the MCAT, right? You know, how do I research? How do I develop a resume? Often certain things that are common sense in certain settings are not common in all settings. So we talk about how do we build out that holistic support for our students. We do that as faculty, we do that as staff, we do that as an advisory board. And so we, we apply uh, the cliche of sports, a team approach uh, to supporting our students because no one person can fulfill all of those needs, but collectively we can help our students uh, achieve success. All right, that holistic approach is so important, right? Our students don't operate in a vacuum. They come to campus and go to class with all of their stuff, all of their identities. They bring it with them. So, Timothy, how has UMass Boston supported your holistic development, whether it's personal or career? And what do you feel like was missing, maybe, in your career development process? And where can we, as an institution, do better? That was a lot of questions, so if I need to <laughs> repeat myself, let me know. That's, that's OK. Um, I think that the the greatest benefit from UMass Boston for me was just the mentorship and the networks and just that, that kind of support. Um, for me, it was really the mentorship because um, all of the mentors that I had spoke, you know, uh, they either advised me or they just explained things that I just didn't understand. So um, as I go back to, you know, um, Megan Rockup in the Honors College, she I remember I got an internship. I was fortunate enough to get an internship at MIT one summer, and obviously um, it's MIT, so you know I was very nervous, and you know had the impost, you know had imposter syndrome, and I said, "How am I going to do well at MIT? You know, like how do I get to MIT? You know?" And um, I remember she said, "Well, what lab are you in?" And you know I told her, "Oh, I'm working in um, uh, Dr. Uh, Jackie Lee's lab," and she said, "Oh, okay. Well, let's do this. Let's go to the website and just like." look through the website and like, let's just talk through it, right? And so just having these conversations and just how walking me through, you know, different things, I think it just broke it down for me and it just um, opened up that layer that, yeah, you too can, you know, you too can belong and you too can actually access these opportunities. And so what I found is that um, just being able to, you know, getting that encouragement from mentors, mm -hmm. um, just getting that confidence. So I'll mention that, uh, my first job was at the Reagan Institute, which is a collaboration between MGH, MIT, and Harvard. And all the people that I started with in my cohort, so like the same level colleagues, all of them were from Harvard. And so, of course, initially, um, I thought, oh, these are all Harvard people, but we're at the same level, right? And it's funny because we went into a, like a meeting, and I remember the professor who runs the lab asked a question, and he said, what do you guys think about this? How can we, like, you know, can, you know he, we had like a paper we were discussing, and essentially, I was one of the few people who could actually answer the questions. And I was like, but they come from Harvard. Like in my mind, I was like, these are Harvard people. Like they should be knowing this stuff. And so what that, so essentially that just gave me the confidence that it doesn't really matter where you went to college necessarily. It just matters the support that you got, the r academic rigor, because you must person is, you know, really academically excellent. And just that just gave me confidence and now throughout my career so far, I've just been able to apply that same confidence and yeah, it just, the imposter syndrome just you know, broke down. Yeah, and you exhibit it, lovely. All yeah. that confidence, all of you all do. I'm, I'm so yeah. impressed by each one of you. And I understand the moving from imposter syndrome to confident you know, professional 
is a is a journey of self development and discovery. So that Absolutely. that's really beautiful to see. Um, I'm getting Vanessa's yelling at me with her car in five minutes, so I'm trying to stand up. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, so before we go to our last question, I I do want Dan for you to tell us a little bit about. We, we've heard a lot today of all of these great programs and all of these things that support our students and, and really connect them with opportunity. Mm -hmm. But I'm wondering if you could share with the audience a little bit about how you got started mm -hmm. and who you connected with to great. get yeah. your program off great. the ground. Great, great question. Um, and I, but I won't go through how I, in, you know, in, in the 90s I made a phone call and talked to a receptionist. and. <laughs> And, and try to explain to this woman what I wanted to do. And, and she said, I have no idea who you should talk to, but I'll try to find someone. And she found someone. And, and, but, um, or I, or, and there's also as a woman in university advancement, uh, Carolyn Flynn, who's, who's, who isn't here anymore. But she, you know, my program was up on a, on a you know, uh, it was posted, but there wasn't any activity around it. And she wanted to, you know, buy me lunch to talk about my program, what we, you know what we, what I wanted to do, and I explained to her I don't have time to eat lunch. I'm doing a startup, so she actually brought lunch to me, right? And then, and she ended up teaching me how it should work here. And so I will now I'll tell you what I, you know, uh, it took years to figure out. But you go to University Advancement, you just it's an excellent group. Um, and and you get started with them, and you know, and, you know Ryan McDonald is here, and uh, and Vanessa Carta is here, and and but you just they are your conduits, right? Mm -hmm. And um, you they will bring you to uh, connect you with merit-based scholarship department, and they will put your scholarship together, and it's just you know it's on the website and. Uh, and they will market it for you, and they will get exposure to students. Um, but they also will introduce you to all of the different, you know, I was introduced to the dean of the College of Management through Carolyn. I was introduced to the dean of computer science. I, I was introduced to every college on campus that was relevant to what I wanted to do. I was introduced to the Venture Development Center. I spoke in um, countless classes and uh, events and workshops, which again, you all don't have to do, but you can do that if you want to. Mm -hmm. um, and introduced me to career services, which is a phenomenal place to, to find students that, mm -hmm. that fit what you want. Um, and so at University Advancement, I am so impressed with, um, uh, and that you asked me earlier, why do I stay? And it certainly is the student body, but the university advancement makes it so easy for me to do what I want to do. Mm -hmm. um, they handle all the logistics and administration and the support and all that. So, so one quick step, just talk to university ad advancement and they will walk you through it. And then they call me. Right. <laughs> there you go. And there then we go. build a powerhouse program. That's right. Right? Exactly. Yes. Yeah, exactly. absolutely. Exactly. That's great. So we're going to move to our final question. And this is for all of you. So we'll just go down the line, right? So why did you feel like it was important to join tonight's conversation? OK, so, oh. um, so about, I want to say a month ago, I spoke at the Welcome Day event for admitted students at UMass Boston. And after the event, Vanessa um, kindly reached out to me, and she asked if I would be willing to share my story. And of course I said yes. And the reason why is because, just as an example, I received the ILSER um, scholarship and the ILSER Leaser scholarship. And it's just an example. They've been able to provide me with the scholarship for the last year and a half. And they're going to continue to provide me one until I graduate. And just for me, it's been such an incredible honor to, um, under her legacy. and. For other students, I hope that they also get to have a scholarship experience like this, because like um, people said, is that you never know what a student is going through. Um, they may be working day and night, um, figuring out how to get to school, spending all their time at school. So it's just been an incredible honor, and this scholarship has definitely helped me, and I hope that other students get the same opportunity. Down the road. Mm -hmm. okay. um, so um, I, I'm, first of all, I'm very bought into the chancellor's uh, uh, theme of UMass Boston and where it's headed. So, and the whole workforce development, it's just absolutely the right thing to do at this time in, in 
uh, in the world. And um, so I'm completely bought into that. I'm also completely bought into university advancement. I, they've done so many things for me, I couldn't say no to them. Um, uh, but, but probably beyond that, um, it, uh, you know, it, it is legacy for me. Um, the, uh, um, I, you can't, I won't be able to do this forever. And, um, and it's been very fulfilling for me. And I just think it's just pretty easy to do. Uh, and has been, you know, again, it's been fulfilling for me to do. So I would, you know, I, I think I'd like to see other people do it as well. You know, that's as much as it, as it moves forward. Because, you know, again, I, I'm, uh, I'll only live another 50 or 60 years and then, <laughs> and then I'll have to find something else to do. So, uh, so. Um, yeah, I'll just say that um, I think that in the workforce, especially within STEM, uh, there's like uh, high underrepresentation of people from students or you know people from um, diverse backgrounds. So in most of the places that I've worked, um, there's a huge, huge, huge um, underrepresentation of um, historically underrepresented backgrounds. And I think just being able to tell that story and um, being able to um, in some way or another give back to UMass because I feel personally that UMass Boston gave me so much and all the scholarships I was able to receive the um, Alumni Association scholarship for two years in a row and that really just propelled me you know enabling me to just focus on school mm -hmm. so I think that um, being able to come here tonight and being able to contribute to that pipeline how can we get more students from underrepresented backgrounds into the workforce um, into the careers that they really want to do and into the fields that they've really desired to do since they joined college would be great. And that we need them to be in, right? Mm -hmm. We know that the diversity contributes to our movement into mm -hmm. being competitive in that globalized economy. So Absolutely. we need your voices there. It, it, we won't succeed without it. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'll, I'll just add, um, as a faculty member, uh, literally the program that I chair would not be in existence without a generous gift. And uh, the students that I've interacted with over the past three years, uh, the joy that they have, that there's a sport leadership <laughs> program, they're like, yes, this is exactly what I've been thinking about. Um, many of them who, uh, we have uh, internship requirements to our program, um, and many of them without the scholarship monies to help support wouldn't be able to pursue those internships. Uh, some of those internships are not paid, some are very low, low wage paid, um, and it's an impediment for our students uh, to do that. Um, as uh, my wife mentioned, we took six students down to the University of South Carolina a couple of weeks ago at a National College Sport Research Institute conference. Uh, it provided them opportunities to present their research. Um, four of our students won a national case study competition, which you know all four of them say how impactful it was at, on, in their lives to have that opportunity. We're in the process of building two study abroad programs for next year in Costa Rica and Greece. And for some of our students, this will be the first time that they've traveled outside the country. Mm -hmm. You know, many of them, it's their first, they're the first in their family to in attend college, to graduate from college, and to travel outside the country. So I've just seen the transformational impact that um, donors like yourself can have on our students to pursue their dreams. And as I mentioned earlier, to not only uh, enhance their lives, but their families and their community. So um, just as a faculty member, I first wanted to say thank you for being here, for having the willingness to support our students. And, uh, just to encourage you to continue to give as, as best you can. Um, so there's a lot of things that I didn't mention already because of time, but um, I got to travel to Scotland and Germany, both study abroad programs fully funded by UMass Boston, which I thought was transformational. Um, I also had a lot of scholarships that helped me pay for a rent and move closer to school um, to focus on you know, my education, the William M. Boulder Scholarship, Alumni Association Scholarship, I also got the Beacon Student Success Fellowship. And I think without all of those scholarships and without all of your you know, donations, I wouldn't be where I am. I wouldn't be the person I am today. And as someone with a lot of loans from med school, I'm not able to contribute back financially at this time. So I am here um, to encourage you all um, to, <laughs> to be generous on my behalf, use my journey as an example. So that's why I'm here.
Well, that was a great way to end our, our talk together. Um, I'll just put a little bow on it, but the, the three themes that I heard throughout all of our conversation is that these programs provided you a, a depth of experience, both industry focused and aligned with your academics that was just invaluable that you took on to your next journey. The mentorship components, which we talked a lot about, and then financial incentive, the ability for you to just focus on doing what you do, right? To give yourself permission to do what you do best. And I think that that's the beauty. As the chancellor said, we want to do what we love, right? We need to be able to have the means to do what we love and fully invest in ourselves. So with that, I will thank you all for a lovely discussion. Let's give them a round of applause. Annie, you give us so much by your example, by the ethic of care with which you bring life to the values and the virtues we embody. So thank you for everything you give us in the care of our fellow citizens in the Commonwealth. That is more than enough. Well, that was a beautiful, beautiful conversation. It fundamentally, I think, synthesizes what we just witnessed. What 100 years of basic research in cognitive neuroscience would teach. All human learning, all human development, all human flourishing is relational. And here we saw the two sides of that Cartesian binary. Our brilliant, our amazing, our engaged students in search of their dream. And the wisdom, the generosity, the vision of our mentors in scaffolding the various journeys and the various paths our students are set in motion. I am so grateful to Monique. Thank you. You have a wicked sense of humor. <laughs> um, thank you to Tanvi. Thank you to Timothy. And again, thank you to Annie. We are so proud of you. Ralph, Jerry, Ken, Nancy, and John, thank you for all you do. You saw the fruits of your wise investments, your transformational generosity embodied the ethic of care for one another that we hope is at the heart of everything we do. Thank you all for joining us. At one point, the conversation was so engaged and so involved that we had a visiting committee of Canadians outside. I don't know if you heard them. <laughs> the geese were very happy and they were very talkative. And they were saying, where do we sign up? Where, do, where, where can we give? 
such a beautiful, beautiful evening with friends, such an extraordinary sense of, of purpose. I hope you will continue to support us in this extraordinary endeavor. If you find yourself inclined to, to connect, to engage our extraordinary team in alumni engagement and advancement are here as, as uh, we made plenty uh, clear uh, today to serve you and to work with you now and moving forward. It's so wonderful to be outside of Mundo Zoom, to be face to face, to see your beautiful smiles and your beautiful eyes and, and your sense of, uh, of purpose. I hope and I very much look forward to our paths crossing again soon. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Good night.